A very good evening from me, John Anderson, and alongside me, the former Liverpool, West Ham and Scotland midfielder Don Hutchison for a real heavyweight clash between Manchester United and Real Madrid in the International Champions Cup at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Well, it's United's final bow and Real's debut in this season's tournament, which features 18 of Europe's top clubs and has grown in size and stature since the Spanish club won the inaugural staging five years ago. United have had a mixed bag so far, an extraordinary penalty shootout win over AC Milan, which went to 26 kicks and then a defeat by Arch rivals Liverpool 4 1. Well, Real come into this game their first since having secured a third successive Champions League crown, but of course, a first without Cristiano Ronaldo. The post CR7 era begins here against a club, of course, for whom he also provided spellbinding performances and hatfuls of trophies. We do what we can do, the boys they give everything, the players with more experience are trying to help the, the young boys. I know that they are pretty tired because they are playing almost every minute of every match and we play one match every three days. But is is the pride, is the professionalism and they are going to try to help the, the young boys and the young boys they have to enjoy uh, the occasion. It's a uh, big crowd, uh, Real Madrid is always a motivation for uh, for everyone so we are going to try to try the best and finally go home and finally wait for the boys that were in the World Cup we are honored to play against uh, Manchester United they are one of the most prestigious club in the world so I think it's going to be a very exciting game for for fans here in the United States and of course we know it's going to be difficult but uh, well we'll try to do our best to win to play well we, we hope this is going to be an entertaining game as well for, for our fans. Great player in his day, Emilio Butragueño, now an ambassador at Real Madrid. Alexis Sanchez will start for a third successive match in this International Champions Cup, having scored against AC Milan. Juan Mata has also been a constant figure for Jose Mourinho's side on this tour. But there is a new face tonight, Fred, 47 million pound signing from Shakhtar Donetsk. Brazilian attacking midfielder starts for the first time. Karim Benzema, of course, scored that goal, which was as much down to Loris Karius's mistake as his predatory instinct in the Champions League, which paved the way for victory over Liverpool back in May. And then enter this man, an extraordinary overhead kick, followed by another Karius error and two goal Gareth Bale clinched victory in that Champions League final for Real Madrid, who also unveiled a new signing today. Vinicius Junior, an 18 year old attacking midfielder formerly of Flamengo in Brazil makes his debut is of course the beginning of a new era not just because of the exit of Ronaldo but also of course Julien Lopetegui who's uh, controversially sacked by Spain on the eve of the World Cup after announcing he was coming to Real Madrid now ensconced at the club and preparing to make his first appearance as coach. Well, there's so many talking points here, Don. Jose Mourinho uh, has been uh, pretty grumpy, generally, complaining about the players who are here, complaining about the players who aren't here. But of course, he's up against a man, Julien Lopetegui, who, uh, as I mentioned, um, parted company with Spain in extraordinary circumstances. But 
heralds a new era for Real. Absolutely. It was interesting actually quite listen to Jose there. He was a little bit more upbeat. He's been quite critical of some of the players that he hasn't had in the squad. Um, still resting and recuperating from the some of the heroics of the World, World Cup. Paul Pogba, for example, and, and one or two others. Um, but he's praised one or two players. People like Eric Bayou have stepped in and, and played their minutes. Um, people like Luke Shaw trying to get minutes under their belt. David De Gea is now back. Scott McTominay and Herrera. So he's got players that are playing minutes for him um, and, and playing a lot of minutes and that's why he said in his interview he was pleased with some of them um, I think for Le Le Peg, I think when you look at the star names Karim Benzema Gareth Bale as you said now a main main player for Real Madrid now probably Ronaldo's gone we might see Gareth Bale come out of his shell a little bit more but this is a very very talented young squad Bale of course was linked with Manchester United quite strongly there were feelings that he might make the move back to Great Britain the Welsh international that um, he has said this week that he believes Bale as Don says can and he's capable of stepping into the shoes of Cristiano Ronaldo giant though they are decent crowd on a very very warm sultry night in Florida these two Great clubs are familiar foes, of course, down the years in European competition. They've met 11 times. And Manchester United have only won two of those 11 matches. Good support, though, for both clubs who are hugely popular throughout the world. Two of the biggest football clubs, two of the biggest brands in world football. Emerging from the tunnel, led by the officials from the... United States, the referee tonight is Alan Chapman. So the scene set for another sparkling encounter in the International Champions Cup. Magnificent Stadium, home of the Miami Dolphins American Football Club. Manchester United in red and black. Real Madrid, as you'd expect, in all white. Benzema, their captain tonight. There is Gareth Bale, who will be hoping to start the season the way he ended the last one he had a fantastic finale of course in the Champions League he scored six goals in his last four appearances for Real didn't want the season to end I don't think proud youngsters enjoying their night out with some of their heroes some big names big stars in both teams De Gea Sanchez Bale Benzema should be an absolute cracker. They have met before in this competition, actually a one-all draw, uh, which Real Madrid won 2-1 on penalties. This is how the uh, teams line up. Manchester United unveil new signing Fred. It's his first start following his move from Shakhtar Donetsk. David De Gea is back in goal for the first time since the World Cup. And with Chris Smalling injured, it's a back four, which includes left-back Timothy Fosu Mensa filling in at center half alexis sanchez makes it three starts out of three in this tournament those are the manchester united substitutes not a great deal of experience there lee grant is a new signing from stoke city in goal sel twan zebe has also featured in this tournament previously Real Madrid also unveil a new Brazilian signing. Their 18-year-old striker, Vinicius Junior, starts. He's in illustrious company alongside Bale and Benzema in that front three. There are other youngsters fielded in Julien Lopetegui's first lineup. They include Uruguayan midfielder Federico Valverde and the central defensive duo of Jesus Vallejo and Javi Sanchez. Not a bad-looking bench, is it? Tony Cruz, Nacho. Lucas Vasquez, Marcos Asensio, all World Cup stars in 
Russia. titles between them these two clubs 16 European Cup stroke Champions Leagues Eric by the United skipper Karim Benzema wearing the armband for Real the final handshakes and uh, any minute now we will be underway at the Hard Rock Stadium who scored in a friendly against the Mexican club America in a 1-1 draw prior to this tournament. Formation of the American lineup officiating tonight. A smile for Gareth Bale as a new era starts for Real Madrid. David De Gea had his fair share of problems in the World Cup. He won't forget that spill from Cristiano Ronaldo in a hurry. But at least he doesn't have Ronaldo to face tonight. As Manchester United kick off, attacking the goal to our right-hand side. Well, Jose Mourinho has been tetchy, to say the least, in the run-up. He's uh, complained about the players that aren't here. He's complained about the players that are here. He's complained about the club's transfer policies, complained about referees. Um, I suppose he won't be complaining if United can beat Real Madrid because, of course, um, they are such great rivals and, and it would be a, a tremendous scalp. Yeah, I think he'd be looking for a performance tonight from his players. I think when you're involved in these tournaments, which this tournament has been absolutely exceptional to watch, as a player, you get minutes under your belt. Um, you get to this point where you're 10 days away from that opening game against Leicester. Now you're looking for performances. You know the players are physically fit. They're physically strong. Now it's just about tidying the loose ends up and looking at which players in the starting 11 tonight and which players are coming back. But Jose is going to start for the opening game of the season. Here's uh, Timothy Fosu Mensah, who's normally a left back, but he appears to be playing on the right side of the uh, central two with Bailly on the left. Finds Damian, who was captain in that game against AC Milan, which ended so dramatically. Both of these teams have won this competition in the past. Manchester United won it in uh, 2014, beating Liverpool. And uh, Real Madrid won it year before in the inaugural competition with a victory over Chelsea. Yeah, just keep an eye on Manchester United's shape. They've chopped and changed. They've normally started with a flat back four and then the second half have reverted to a three. It looks as though in the opening minutes they've started with a three, which means Luke Shaw play left wing back and Matteo Damian right wing back. Big season for this for Jose yeah, in the Premier League. Absolutely. I mean, there are rumblings and, and rumours that this could be the beginning of the end, is that the way you see it? Well, normally, he struggles in his third year, wherever he's been, mm. um, you know, he's faced the sack, and you know, whether it be Real Madrid or Chelsea, he seems to struggle. He's got his trophy in the cabinet for Manchester United, he's won one or two, but now, I think with his arch nemesis and Pep rocking up next door, now I think what you're looking for now for these Manchester United players is to start playing well. So I don't think a Jose Mourinho and Manchester United side can grind their way to the title. Normally he's done that with some other sides. Now the way City have raised the bar, Jose still got some excellent players. If he unleashes most of them and let them fly, I'm pretty sure they might go close. Well, one of those players is Alexis Sanchez, who's just been grappled by Jesus Vallejo, the 21-year-old central defender. You can see there, it's clearly a sort of tackle you might see when the Dolphins play here. But, um, I think that's the impression I get being a neutral is when you've watched Manchester United over the last season to 18 months under Jose, I think now you're looking for a little bit of a progression. Now you're looking for, right, what type of football can you play? Because they've got some fantastic players. And Jose still is a world-class manager. 
What about Lopetegui? I mean, it was extraordinary the way that um, Spain discarded him so close to the World Cup. Uh, was he right or was he wrong um, to pledge his allegiance to Real Madrid at that particular time? Well, maybe, maybe the board at Real Madrid could have done things different. I don't know why they felt as though they need to announce that Lopetegui was taking the job. They maybe could have left it until after the World Cup. Uh, but it was really bizarre circumstances. Spain, of course, went out of the World Cup on penalties to the hosts. Here's uh, Sanchez for Manchester United, who scored a terrific early goal against AC Milan. He looks um, sharp. It's not a particularly good cross, though, and it's easily dealt with by Javi Sanchez, one of two young centre halves that the Petegui has given faith to. They do have Bale and Benzema in the starting lineup, but otherwise it's fairly unfamiliar. Yeah, interested reading a few blogs. I mean, another three-time Champions League winners on the spin, Real Madrid. But the blogs that I'm reading and the, and the, the rumours coming out of Real Madrid is it might be a sort of year where they're not going to challenge for a Champions League or La Liga, which I can't see because it's still a very talented squad. But they just maybe think they're lacking in one or two major signings. Here's Sanchez for Manchester United. That's a very good ball, and it's an early chance which is spurned. And disappointingly so from Juan Mata, who just couldn't quite seem to get the ball under his spell. In the end, he flicked it wide. A lovely little run, you can see. Bending his run, Juan Mata. Nice little ball from Alexis Sanchez. And even on that left side, you fancy Juan Mata to do better there. Slightly sloppy in his first touch. Manchester United beat Liverpool in this competition four years ago. In those days it was uh, a tournament that culminated in a final. Of course it isn't now. With uh, the 18 teams playing three matches each and totals being totted up. Manchester United have uh, only managed two points so far courtesy of that penalty shootout win against AC Milan, which went long into the night. Real starting their campaign. Their next game is against Juventus, but um, Cristiano Ronaldo, we understand, is not going to be part of the Juventus squad for that game. And then they round it off against Roma in New Jersey. Looking forward to watching Fred tonight. I've seen him yeah. a lot last season playing for Shakhtar Donetsk. He's a real talented player, all left sided. Got brilliant technique. He's normally Danny plays in the two. Sorry, yeah, sorry. He normally plays in the two. I think that's where he's playing tonight. Promising build-up by uh, Real Madrid with Vinicius Junior number 28 at the bottom of your picture involved. Only 18. Made nearly 70 appearances for Flamengo in Brazil. out of possession almost playing with a flat back five Here's, uh, Vallejo back to Kiko Casilla who's preferred to Keylor Navas tonight this is Teo Hernandez who's French Just build up this by Real early ball in Benzema just wide Decent move by Real. They look very sharp. Some lovely one-touch pass, a nice little overlap. Weighted pass from Bale. And then the early cross to the near post to Benzema. And as soon as he takes that shot on, you fancy that's going to end up in the back of the net. Slightly goes past the near post, but anything on target would have troubled David De Gea from that distance. He managed four goals in the last 18 matches of last season, though, of course, one of them crucially was uh, that opener in the Champions League. Albeit one that was rather gifted to him by the Liverpool goalkeeper. And that was uh, a chance at either end, Mata for United and Benzema for Real. And signs are with eight minutes gone that this could be an open game. Here's Vinicius Junior. Nice well looking crossfield ball, but it's well read by Luke Shaw. There's Bailly, who's been given the captaincy tonight praised by Jose Mourinho for filling in late for Chris Smalling following Smalling's injury Kicking of 
of um, Kike Casilla has not been all it might be tonight. He's put one straight out of play, and the last one was uh, pretty wayward as well. United lose the ball in midfield. It's a lovely touch by Vinicius, showing uh, a bit of Brazilian flair there. Here's uh, Fred, Manchester United's Brazilian, tripped by Benzema, free kick United. Yeah, you can see the trick there from Vinicius, just trying to play one round the corner to Benzema, looking for the little one too. But a good awareness from the youngster. Nice little bit of skill from Fred. As I said, all left-sided. Very talented youngster. by Damian, who might get a second chance here. A little bit casual, though. Gives it away to Ceballos. It's a neat turn, a neat pass finds Vinicius. The latest wonder boy from Brazil. Happy to follow in the footsteps of Neymar, who was so often, of course, Real's nemesis at Barcelona. Here's Fred. It's nicely done. Ma uh, Mata. Cross to Sanchez. It's a clever ball. Mata's onto it. Good save by Casilla. Very good play. Sharp Alexis Sanchez is tonight. You can see the way he started the game. His footwork's been very good. He's picking one or two passes to Juan Mata. Introduction in Kiev in May. There's that flat back five. You see Scott McTominay just playing as a third centre half. Fosu Menta and Eric Bai. So when they're out of possession, you can see the shape from Manchester United allowing Real Madrid to have the ball in these areas. So it's uh, Javi Sanchez who Joined Real Madrid at the age of seven, 21 years of age now. Benzema forward to Teo Hernandez. Very narrow matches now, aren't they? Yeah. And even no gaps. This is Ceballos. Now uh, Benzema. Easy for Bai to clear. Pretty sure Jose's not finished yet. One or two players might leave. There's talk of Matteo Damian maybe going back to Italy. One or two big players coming in, but he needs some signings yeah. through the door quickly. Perisic has been mentioned, hasn't he? Fantastic a tremendous player. addition that would be. Jose's the been World Cup he's he had. Fancied him for years. Yeah. Just can't get that one over the line. Yeah. You could see him up and down that left hand side for Manchester United, couldn't you, Perisic? Mm. Yeah. The amount of work rate he goes through. Very talented player controlling things at the moment. This is uh, Marcos Llorente who has a, an extraordinary pedigree in terms of um, his antecedents. His father Paco was uh, a former Real player who won a couple of um, Copa del Rey, but that's nothing compared to his grandfather who was uh, Paco Gento who played alongside Alfredo Di Stefano and Ferenc Puskas in the a Real Madrid team that won five consecutive European Cups in the late 50s and early 60s and is now uh, an honorary life president of the club. So he's got uh, decent genes. That's fair to say, <laughs> he has got good genes, yeah. This is a deep lying central midfield player, number 18, center of your picture there. Sort of the, uh, Younger players, 22 years old. Yeah, as a sitter, isn't he? You can see he's the buffer. He likes to get the ball and play it out to the left-hand side. Then he stays behind the ball. He's always an option, just drops in. And that third centre-half position when you are in possession. Here's uh, Audrey Zola, the fullback who made his Spain debut in the World Cup qualifier in October. Didn't make the final party. Uh, Ceballos, 
He's done well to get away from Fred there. And here's Vinicius. Let's see what he can do on the run. Ball into Benzema. Good challenge by Ander Herrera. Well, you can see Vinicius looks a real player. Even the, the way he fizzed that into Karim Benzema. He tested the Frenchman's touch. Let him down slightly. Looks a very, very confident boy as well. South American under 17 championship with Brazil. He was the top scorer in that tournament and won the golden ball as the best player. That was uh, at the age of 16. On the run now, but uh, being ignored at the moment by Gareth Bale. And instead finds uh, Ceballos. He's had plenty of the ball. Here's Vinicius now. Ceballos again, and Diazola is in a bit of space down the right hand side. Going to take on Luke Shaw, who does well and finds Fred. Fred won three titles and three cups in his spell at Shakhtar. Here's Damian, who, as uh, Don mentioned, is a player who's been linked with a move but has featured quite heavily in this uh, tournament. Well, I think what he is, Matteo Damian, he's got a fantastic attitude. And whenever he's called upon, I don't think he's ever let Jose down. And he'll keep going until he's told otherwise. It's a useful looking ball. Offside though. Frustratingly for United. I'd love to know what Jose's thinking, where his team and where his squad are at. Right here, right now, ten days before the first game of the season on a Friday night against Leicester. And if you believe what he says, uh, not in great shape would no. probably be the answer. I mean, he's not just. We, we know what he's like. Um, is it just bravado? I mean. He, he does tend to be a, a man who uh, he plays the media quite cleverly, yeah. doesn't he? The only thing I would say is I agree with some of the things that he said because, you know, with 10 days, 11 days before the Premier League starts, it's a worry when you see some of the, the players who've featured heavily in a World Cup and not just Manchester United, it's other sides as well in and around Europe. And the seasons are, are about to get underway yeah. and a lot of them are still have not reported back for training. I know they need their rest, I totally understand that. But the season's not a million miles away from beginning and you need time to adjust time to acclimatize with new teammates etc yeah. uh, you need a feel of the ball get back into the swing of things they'll be physically fit I don't think they'll have a problem with that but there's going to be a few sides going into the Premier League season in 11 days time with I don't know one or two players from each squad that probably are not 100% yeah. fit I gather Rashford and Jones fresh from England duty have reported back to training camp in England and obviously without Pogba, Rojo's injured, Lingard, Young, Lindelof, Bellaini, Lukaku are all still recovering from the World Cup. I think if you have Pochettino's men at Spurs are not due back until next mm. week neither. Yeah. It is difficult though, I mean the World Cup is just over, I mean you played in the final like Pogba and yeah. um, obviously the English Belgian players uh, were involved in the third place playoff the day before the final. It's not a huge break. Anyway, here's Damian for United. Good cutback, good goal. It's Alexis Sanchez again. Scored early against AC Milan. And has scored early again here to break the deadlock. And it's Manchester United who lead. Lovely three-man move. And Herrera started the first ball. Just in behind the fullback to Matteo Damian. Got to the byline and he pulled a lovely ball back to Alexis Sanchez. You know he's got the quality in front of goal. That's a little ball from Herrera. Fantastic way to pass that one. Little pullback and a good finish. Calm finish from Alexis Sanchez. Gets over the ball. Keeps it nice and low. Nothing really the goalkeeper could have done about that. That's a really good finish. Swept in unerringly. And didn't make the best of starts necessarily at United. Having made that move from Arsenal. Two goals in his last 15 matches have uh, 
last season, three in all, but he's uh, scored again in this competition. Tony United's third goal of it. They were beat before one, of course, by Liverpool. Andreas Pereira with a spectacular free kick. And Sanchez has taken both his goals well and just. I think we'll see the best of Alexis Sanchez this season in the Manchester United shirt. I'm convinced of that. Took him a little bit of time. He was carrying a knock when he left Arsenal. Matthias has just dragged it out of play. I don't think his fitness levels were too great. You know, I think Alex Oxley Chamberlain had to go through a mini pre season when he arrived at Liverpool. It shows you where some of the Arsenal players were at in terms of their physical fitness. And I think Alexis Sanchez was in the same boat. He certainly looked sharp on this trip. He's been asked to start every game. I don't think necessarily Mourinho was planning to do that, but with all the absences that we've mentioned, they have picked up injuries as well. Uh, but Antonio Valencia has gone home. Nemanja Matic is injured. Anthony Martial, his another one whose future is clouded. He went back home to attend the birth of his child which is absolutely fair enough but Mourinho was critical of the fact that he doesn't appear to have come back well he had a quiet summer didn't he Alexis Sanchez no World Cup so he's got a bit of time on his hands now he's back and as you said he's played most of the minutes and some players like that when you when you haven't had a lot of training or games through the summer sometimes you just want to get back training and get back as early as you can he's by clearing for United by that Sanchez goal, which was beautifully set up by Herrera, who's on the ball here. And then uh, Damiani provided the cross. Yeah, Hernandez has been fouled. It's a free kick to Real Madrid. Not really started yet, 20 minutes in. Real Madrid, no. they've been quiet. They have reasonable amounts of possession, but other than that Benzema chance early on, they haven't really created anything to trouble David De Gea. Yeah, will be keen, I think, to get rid of the cobwebs after, a, by his standards, a very disappointing World Cup. I think it's more so the tempo that they're playing at. It's quite slow at the minute, Real Madrid. Yes. Hernandez, 20-year-old Marseille-born Frenchman, who's uh, father played for Atletico Madrid once upon a time. Zola challenged by Sanchez and Sanchez wins the throw. Certainly looks up for it, doesn't he? Alexis Sanchez. The one thing you generally get from him is effort. It didn't always come off for him in the spectacular fashion that Arsenal fans had got used to at United last season, but certainly looks, as you say, as a player who's maybe going to find the second season a little more comfortable, having bedded in a little bit and Put himself used to what um, is expected of him at Old Trafford. Yeah, he's, a, sorry. he's a workaholic, isn't he? Yeah. Alexis Sanchez. You always know you're going to get graft from him. He's Benzema. Very good tackle, though, by Luke Shaw, who started fairly assuredly on that uh, left hand side of the Manchester United midfield setup. Sloppy there from Karen Benzema. A little 10 15 yard ball uh, to his right hand side. He's claiming a foul, Alexis Sanchez see much of Bale yet have we with nearly a quarter of the game having elapsed here's uh, Pereira the one who's um, cemented himself in this particular competition it's good by Sanchez to find Mata and Mata has found Damian this is promising for United and they might get a second chance here but uh, Hernandez does well they looked just a little bit casual to me, Real Madrid, especially yeah. Theo and Hernandez. They had one or two lazy little touches. Yeah, using the ball now. This is uh, Ceballos. Good challenge, though, by Pereira. Then spoils it with a poor ball. It's good by Vinicius. His touches have been excellent so far, haven't they? He's been the best player so far. Yeah. He's uh, trying to get on the end of this one as well. And he'll get there too. Vinicius Junior. Lovely play by the Brazilian. It just goes wide at the near post from Bale. But uh, lovely play by the young 
18 year old formerly of Flamengo a lovely ball from Gareth Bale out wide and this is where Fontamenta doesn't want to be 1v1 in the 18 yard box lovely skill from Vinicius Bale just trying to get to the near post to get on the end of the cross but super skill Fontamenta on toast there didn't he what a yeah. future this kid's got only yeah. 18 uh, sensational scored uh, 14 goals in 69 appearances for Luango before moving across to Spain completed the uh, deal 11 days ago Although, uh, it was always known that he was going to arrive after one more season in his home country very good addition. Here's one matter for United. Luke Shaw is arriving here. Shot was weak and blocked by Alvaro Odriozola. With Real Sociedad. He's uh, arrived to strengthen Real's squad this summer. United players have been a little bit surprised how poorly the Real Madrid players have started and I think they're realizing if they get any sort of passing rhythm together Manchester United they could put two or three past this Madrid side very easily. Here's Vinicius though tearing away almost tripped over his own feet allowed uh, Posu Mensa the opportunity to slide in and tackle he uh, was comprehensively beaten by him a minute ago but Posu Mensa will be pleased to have got that tackle in. Swung across by Valverde, the Uruguayan, who's not yet made his off full debut for Real. That was a solid tackle by Shaw. A little bit naughty. Oh, is it McTominay? Yeah, a little bit naughty that from Scott McTominay because he knows what he's doing. He's tackled the player with a follow through. Zola's not at all happy about that. But so the referees let it go. There's a few things to say about referees during this competition, but. Um, that McTominay went unpunished as he went to play on his knees there I'm not sure whether that's an injury or just a slip now then fall forward towards Juan Mata he's having a look to his left hand side to see if anyone's arriving Sanchez is knocks it back brilliant goal United 2-1 up and a Herrera on the end of it but beautifully set up by Juan Mata and Alexis Sanchez and Real Madrid have been sloppy and lethargic have been punished it's 2-0 to United it was coming because they have been sloppy they haven't got any rhythm Real Madrid whatsoever their passing's been off their tempo's been quite slow when Manchester United go forward and Herrera started this game 26 minutes in really well one matters away you can see the run of Alexis Sanchez that's the partnership that's the run that he wants to make nice little knock back and Ando Herrera with a left foot finish hard and low good technique and very very good timing on the strike I said a couple of minutes ago, if United want to put the foot right down to the floor, they're capable of getting two or three, and they've got the second. Oh, what a good header by Sanchez, and what a crisp finish by Ander Herrera. He's not a goal scorer traditionally by any means, only two last season, including uh, the winner against Tottenham Hotspur in the FA Cup semi final. But that was a lovely move. Matter given too much space, though, by Real. He had time to look across. Sanchez. Finding Herrera and Herrera finding the net. Real Madrid finding themselves 2 0 down. Last time they faced uh, English opposition, it went rather better than this. Here's Hernandez. Probably the best United have played of the three matches they've had. Yeah, it's a combination of both. They are playing well, Manchester United. One matter's obviously a threat, and so is Alexis Sanchez. But this man's side young side haven't started well mm. at all well, it's not an illustrious start to his um, new managerial campaign 27 minutes the second goal came and well the scoreboard doesn't lie at the hard rock stadium they've not really had to work for it Manchester no. United have they? it's been easy for them yeah. they're solid defensively got good shape when they haven't got the ball with Vinicius, uh, Yulen Lopetegui, but maybe not much else so far. Here's Bale, though, finding 
Nodri Azola back to Gareth Bale. This is Javi Sanchez. Vinicius. Try and move that ball quicker, too many yeah. touches. This is Audrey Zola. Now Bale. It's come through to Audrey Zola again. He doesn't want to touch it. Bale does, though. Gets to the byline. And slid behind by Eric Bay for a corner to Real. We're just short of half an hour gone. Yeah, clever from Audrey Zola because yeah. he knew he might have been offside, so he just allowed Gareth Bale to make the run. I see Luke Shaw go into ground. Good defensive cover there from Eric White. First real set piece opportunity of any note for the European champions. Put away by Damian. Only as far as Vinicius. Blocked by Mata. It's come back to Vinicius though via the head of Shaw. Very light on his feet, Vinicius, yeah. isn't he? Very, very sharp. Passing has um, been pretty unerringly accurate as well so far. Bale just beaten to it there. And the uh, flying figure of Scott McTominay. This is Valverde. And there's out wide to Bale. Oh, Hard show inside on his left foot. Yeah. I've seen better from him in those sort of situations than that particular effort, but you're right. It's a risky manoeuvre, allowing Bale any kind of space to unleash that left foot. Yeah, but Scott McTominay there, know your players. You know, Gareth Bale, you shift him on inside on his strong left foot. Got a rocket over shot. As we saw in the Champions League, finally, he said Carrick's made the mistake. We're absolutely right, so you've got to show him to the byline on his wicker right foot. It's too short of 150 Real Madrid goals, Gareth Bale, as we break for refreshments. It's uh, a warm old night in Miami, Florida. Have you ever seen a better Champions League goal than Gareth Bale's? I, I, I mean, there's been some well, belters well, down the, the line. Well, the, the only one that would contest it is the Zidane volley I was there at Hamden yeah, in Ham uh, Hamden Park I was there um, I mean I think you'd have to say maybe that Bales is a better goal because of what he had to do to make connection with the ball whereas yeah. Zidane it was just brilliant and instinctive but Bale I mean the, the way that he managed to bicycle kick the ball in we're watching the uh, Manchester United goals the second of which was beautifully set up and very well taken indeed he Fine. won't get an assist uh, under Herrera for the first one, but he, sh he should do really because there was a lovely little weighted pass in behind for Matteo Damian for Alexis Sanchez's goal. And obviously he gets the, the goal. Lovely little layoff from Alexis Sanchez there. Good work from Juan Mata. United fans enjoying themselves. And why wouldn't they? They're up against uh, the 13 times European champions and they're leading by two goals to nil come from the Caribbean to support them. Advice for Gareth Bale from uh, the man who believes he can fill Cristiano Ronaldo's shoes. Whether that happens remains to be seen. He might be thinking that Vinicius Jr. might be the sort of player who can fill Cristiano Ronaldo's shoes. He's been absolutely brilliant um, in this opening 33 minutes. Really the only Real player who's um, shown any creativity, purpose and, and pace really he'll be a bit happier than he was uh, a couple of days ago come on Jose, give us a smile <laughs> just a little one Had a look. so the uh, fluids have been taken in and uh, Javi De Gea who's not had a single thing to do so far look at the possession Typical um, of the way 
Spanish clubs and indeed the Spanish national team play and at times it doesn't really count for anything one thinks of that game against Russia in the World Cup Spain had masses of possession and did nothing with it which is what Real have done really today yeah they had over a thousand passes in one game mm. I don't think possession especially in modern-day football is king anymore it used to be and we saw in tonight's game Manchester United absolutely cruising it 2-0 up Benzema had, a, had half a chance early on but Manchester United are being clever about this because they're allowing Real Madrid to have a lot of the ball because they're no threat at the moment and every time Real Madrid come past the halfway line Manchester United win the ball back and then look on the counter with Alexis Sanchez and uh, Herrera and Juan Mata they look dangerous Here's Fred, who had a promising start, but has gone a bit quiet. Now Llorente. Vinicius has gone across to the right-hand side now. Ball pushed across by Llorente again to Audrey Zola. Here's Vinicius. He just uh, lifts everything, doesn't he, pace-wise, from Madrid when he gets the ball. He's placed by Bale. Here's Mata. And now Sanchez and United, who've countered profitably so far, look to do again. Very good work there from Lexi Sanchez. Kept hold of the ball well. Here's Fred. Not sure. I think it's quite evident that you can see where both teams are at in terms of getting ready for their new seasons. Real Madrid 19 days away from playing Getafe. Manchester United only 10 days away from that Leicester game. They look sharper. They do have that derby in the Super Cup, of course. Uh, Real against Atletico winners of the Europa League. Derby in that uh, big European clash. That's uh, on August the 15th, which is four days before they open their La Liga campaign. They're never really in it last season after a very very poor start Real one of the things La Petegui will have to do is get them up and running far quicker than last season under Zidane that was under immense pressure already you know the job that Zidane done was absolutely incredible three Champions Leagues on the spin strangely only one title though in that uh, particular sequence and they won the Papa Del Rey for a while either. Alexis Sanchez has gone down, fouled by Federico Valverde, the Uruguayan who played in the under 20 World Cup last year, the one that England won. Uruguay got to the semi finals. He was a big part of that. Here's Fred finding Pereira. Keeping hold of the ball really well, and the switcher plays on. As Damian's got lots of room out over to this right-hand side, Luke Shaw's hugging the left side, and they're making the pitch Manchester United very, very wide. Been by some distance, the better team. Here's uh, David De Gea. He's uh, a virtual bystander, really. Here's Fosu Mensa. Now Bai. Of course, has played in Spain for Espanol and Villarreal. This is Llorente, and now Hernandez. Fullbacks are the key for Real Madrid. Teo Hernandez and Orizola, they're the spare men. They've got to work that ball a lot quicker. Zola, who's arrived from Sociedad, looks a, a little more accomplished than um, Teo Hernandez. He's uh, a couple of years older at 22. Already a, a Spanish international. Lopetegui gave him his debut last October. Like what he saw and has brought him along here. But, um, without profit, really, today. Here's Ceballos. Hernandez, one of those uh, 
fullbacks trying to create something. Benzema, quiet since that early chance went wide. Now here's Hernandez, strong run by the French fullback, but strong tackle too by Eric Bailly. That's why he looks a better player, Thiago Hernandez, the higher up the pitch he goes. I don't think defensively, even though he's still young at 20, 1v1 situations, he's not strong enough just yet, but going forward he's a real good athlete. That's for the French under 20 side. Here's Audrey Zola. Bale. Useful ball, chance for Llorente. No room to turn, but... He's still going to keep possession. He's done well. Audrey Zola in. And Bailly again with a, a useful intervention. And it was a little bit better from Real. A bit more much pace better. and pep about that attack. Yeah, much better because they're moving the ball quick and they've got forward runners. That's what they need. Gareth Bale spots a run. And that's what you have to do from midfield. Maybe Marcus Llorente try and make some runs. He wants a penalty. Eric Bailly's all over him, but he wasn't. He was just stronger than him. First time Llorente's got forward, really. Last thing that Jose Mourinho needs is another injured defender. And at the moment, Eric Bay is being treated by uh, Andreas Pereira. Referee just uh, looking to get him off the pitch so that he can receive treatment or get back into position so that this corner can be taken. I think he's going to be okay, Bay, but Antonio Valencia has had to go back with a calf injury. Chris Smalling has picked up an injury. Shaw has had a, a niggle. Bailly has had a niggle himself. Rojo is um, still sidelined following an injury in the World Cup. So Manchester United's defensive problems are piling up and Bailly's back down on the ground. Now this will be a worry for Jose. Couldn't quite see where he got the injury. Well, it was just a simple interception, really, yeah. wasn't it? And uh, well, he's had a good game so far, captain the side tonight. Unless it was where he took the block. Might have been in a painful area. Yeah. But normally, as a player, you can shake those off pretty quickly. I was going to say that's preferable to what you might call a longer-lasting injury. Let's have a look. It's a big... Yeah, see... <laughs> Might have been a very, very painful blow indeed. Might have just winded him slightly. Give the crowd a chance to get a few snapshots. With, uh, three and a half minutes left of a first half in which Manchester United have been very impressive. Alexis Sanchez firing them in front on 18 minutes after excellent work by Herrera and Damian. And Herrera then finishing off a move Nine minutes later with a, a good finish. Baez off the pitch and the corner is taken. With the United at the moment down to ten. Audrey Zola. Called in by Llorente, flicked away and then the clearance is completed by Luke Shaw. He's uh, had to go across to the right as United temporarily reshuffle their defensive situation with Bai off the field. better day so far for Jose Mourinho and Manchester United few who saw it will forget that penalty shootout against AC Milan in which uh, 26 kicks were taken nine were missed United scored nine to Milan's eight but then uh, everything came crashing back down to earth as they lost 4-1 to Liverpool which is um, not something Manchester United fans will ever be able to take with any great grace. I think he'd be pleased tonight, though, Jose. The result going into half time, if it stays like this, they've been comfortable. But some of the individual performances, Scott McTominay's done well as a third centre half. I think Matteo Damian's played well. The standout players have probably been Juan Mata and Alexis Sanchez. Fred's had some neat touches, hasn't been heavily involved in the game. Well, that's a bit of a stumble by Herrera there, but he's got away with it. You're right, Mata and Sanchez have been 
champion, which is best players throughout the tournament, really. Damian took his eye off the ball. It's a throw to Real Madrid right in front of Jose Mourinho's dugout. But Real have... Well, they haven't looked like Real Madrid at all, have they, tonight? They've been ponderous. It is um, a team which, despite the presence of the Galacticos, Bale and Benzema, is a, an inexperienced side, but an awful lot to show their new manager that they should be in his thoughts going ahead. Well, Karim Benzema, apart from that early chance, has been quite anonymous. I think Gareth Bale's had some good touches. Vinicius has been their best player. They come United with Juan Mata. Cover is provided by Jesus Vallejo. Sent off on his debut, Vallejo, last season in a cup game against Fuenlabrada. United are going to get to half time with a comfortable lead. Shaw. And again, Sanchez is in the box. It's been nodded away from him by Hernandez. Just all a little bit too easy. Any given goes. And Real Madrid's youngsters at the back are just switching off. That's far too easy. Just tries to stand one up at the far post towards one matter there, Luke Shaw. It's all he can do from that angle. Corner for United as we move into four minutes of added on time. The Bailly injury and the water break adding up. Maybe Juan Mata to take it. And as far as Herrera shoots and uh, fortunately for Real, Jesus Vallejo was there to block. Might want to go 3-0 down before half time. Maybe they can uh, pinch one back but uh, Piazzola's gone over, wanting a free kick. Here's Bale. And Baye's now back on the field. That was him hooking it away there. So that's good news for Mourinho. Here's Pereira free kick didn't really paper over the cracks against Liverpool De Gea clears Sanchez uh, beaten by Vallejo Still got one of the best central midfields in Europe, Real Madrid, when you think of Casemiro, Tony Cruz yeah. and Luka Modric. There's quite a few very, very impressive players on the bench for uh, Real. But, uh, quite a few missing as well from the World Cup. Varane, a winner. Marcelo, Casemiro, Modric and Kovacic to resurface after their efforts. Kovacic and Modric runners up, of course, to FL Varane's France. Player of the World Cup for me, Luka Modric. I, mm. thought, oh yeah. I thought he was excellent. Yes, magnificent. Here's Bale finding Sanchez. Javi Sanchez, that is. We've got a Sanchez on each team. Here's Bailly moving freely again. One thing I was very surprised at, I haven't watched Luka Modric over the last 10 years, was the engine. You know, at 32, yeah. the amount of games mm. that Croatia went extra time, and he yes. was still full of running. They had a magnificent midfield, didn't they, with Rakitic, Perisic, and Modric all involved. Mm. Here's uh, Hernandez for Real. Oof, and they've poached a goal just before half time, and it's the predator, Karim Benzema. Well, he's been quiet up to that point, but he's got Real Madrid from nowhere, really, back into the game in first half stoppage time. Manchester United 2, Real Madrid 1. United absolutely just switched off. Lovely ball in from the left-hand side. You have to track the run just before half-time. One of the deadliest poachers in Europe, Karim Benzema. Good cross in from Theo Hernandez. 
there's confusion between Scott McTominay and Eric Bailly who's actually picking the run up easy finish in the end that was the easy part for Karim Benzema should never be allowed in there well he's eight short of 200 goals for Real Madrid Karim Benzema be looking to reach that milestone once the new season starts but he had an early chance which he put wide and contributed very little for about half an hour but has um, popped up in the right place at the right time as he so often does yeah, the bizarre thing about that goal is three players David De Gea, Eric Barry and Scott McTominay all very very static as that cross come in well Manchester United will be very very disappointed to end the half like that because they had the game in the palm of their hand goals by Alexis Sanchez and Ander Herrera both really well taken put them in command Real Madrid provided little or nothing until Benzema popped up and it's going to make the second half very interesting at half time it's Manchester United 2 Real Madrid 1 